Flash! Ah! That's a different guy? You're kidding me. What's up, everybody? Geek Toy coming at you live once again, and of course, I know that's a different guy. So let's talk about episode two, season three of The Flash called Paradox. Reeling from last week's events of Flashpoint, we have come to the Flashpoint Paradox, where Barry Allen is learning that not everything is what it seems to be after he tried to reset the timeline to be more accurate. And now he's finding out, oh shit, everything's still not as accurate as I thought it was going to be. So we start off with Barry going to Star City and confronting Felicity Smoke. Because he feels like she's probably the only confident that he has that he can tell her what he just did. So he tells her that Iris and Joe are fighting and that Cisco is not Cisco and he's still pissed and he's Cisco's mad at him and he doesn't know why he's mad at him and everything just doesn't seem correct. Like things have reset somewhat like to a certain extent but there are things that just didn't reset properly. Um, and then we also come to learn that John Diggle, who has a daughter, now has a son, John Diggle Jr., and not the daughter Sarah, named after, um, you know, the deceased Sarah Lance. Of course, she came back because of the Lazarus Pit. Um, so now he has a son, John Diggle Jr., and anybody that watches DC's Legends of Tomorrow uh, knows that John Diggle Jr. ends up becoming a character named Connor Hawk aka Green Arrow in the future. Um, so I guess that's how that happened. Um, and they re they had introduced that character, that version of Arrow season, uh, the, the previous season of Legends of Tomorrow, I think episode six. So yeah, that's a very interesting plot line that they we have discovered that Barry Allen has also changed. So he goes back to Central City after that, and he tries to make things the way they were in the previous timeline. Um, he's trying to repair the relationships that have been damaged. We learn that Cisco resents Barry for not going back in time and saving his brother Dante. He's also introduced to a character that he never even knew existed before named Julian Dorn, played of course by Harry Potter's Tom Felton. Wonderfully played! might I add, because his character was really, really well done. Good job, Tom, man. I, I really appreciate that. Now, they are professional rivals. They are also personal rivals. They don't like each other's personalities. And so Barry Allen has to deal with that. And he doesn't like dealing with that. He doesn't like dealing with this character. Um, and the character doesn't like dealing with Barry anymore. <laughs> so we, we have that dynamic as well. We see Edward Claris. Now, Edward Claris was a rival from the first episode in that alternate timeline. He was, and um, he's also a evil speedster. Uh, so we see him in this new timeline, and he's not a speedster just yet. And he hears these voices in his head, and he sees these writings on the wall, and they say, Alchemy. And he go, he, you know, these voices lead him to this underground lair uh, where all these, like, this, a, a gathering of alchemists are, are, are around. And, and there's Dr. Alchemy down there, and he's just like, I want to make you reach your full potential. Holy crap, what does that mean? So, Dr. Alchemy apparently knows that Barry Allen has gone back in time and, and reset the timeline and um, he shows that to the rival and through his powers of alchemy restores his powers and that's how we I guess we can confront this season now is that Dr. Alchemy's mission is to restore or try to restore that previous timeline that Barry Allen had created by giving these people that had powers in that previous timeline their powers back. So Barry Allen learns that the rival ha is, exists in this world now and goes out to try and defeat him. While they are talking, while Edward Claris confronts Barry Allen, he's like, I know what you did now. Nah. Ha, ha, ha. I am the rival. Ha, ha, ha. There is a city camera that's on and Iris learns that, like, why are you talking to him? You obviously know this guy. What's going on? You're acting really, really different. So Barry 
attempts to try and go back in time to reset the timeline again when he's pulled out of the timeline by Jay Garrick. And Jay's like, okay, you know what? I'm ke I was keeping an eye on you, young, young, young kid, because I've made the same mistakes in trying to reset timelines and all that stuff. But let me tell you something, dude. Sometimes you just have to live with your mistakes and you gotta live with the path that's chosen for you because otherwise you're just gonna fuck up everything. All right? Um, so he lets him go back to the reality that he's created and um, Barry ends up telling Joe and Iris and Cisco and Caitlin everything that he, you know, did. And he's like, well, you know what? Um, I'm sorry, guys. I'm so, so sorry that I, I did all of this and I apologize for everything. Um, and let me just try and fix this and defeat the rival and, and get my life back together, I guess. And they're all pissed off at Barry at first. And then Iris thinks about it and she's like, well, he, he just tried to make things right, I guess, and I don't know, just, he made a mistake. You know, he has unlimited power, and people sometimes with power they don't quite understand make mistakes, and then they have to live with those mistakes, and, um, you know, it's, it's kind of foolish, but, you know, what are you gonna do? It's Barry. You know, we love Barry. We need Barry. Barry needs, the world needs Barry Allen, you know? That's, that's all you can say about that. So they end up forgiving Barry, except for maybe Cisco a little bit. Cisco is on the path of trying to forgive Barry, but he's still like, you're a selfish asshole. I don't know yet. Barry Allen defeats Edward Claris. He is introduced to Dr. Alchemy. He tells everybody in Star Labs, like this, you know, here's Dr. Alchemy. This is what this guy's been doing here. And um, I guess this is his mission to try and restore the previous timeline. I don't know, but he has gotten his powers through the use of alchemy and uh, yeah. So he's gonna be a really, really interesting, excellent fucking villain for season three. Barry confronts Caitlin and he says, you know what, Caitlin, you're like the least screwed up out of all of us, you know? You're the one that didn't, you know, the timeline didn't affect that much. And then he walks away and then Caitlin's like, oh, and she looks at her hand and starts freezing over. So we're like, oh shit, you know, he created Killer Frost fucking dumbass you know so now caitlin's probably going to become killer frost at some point during the season um or if not you know maybe she's going to be good about it or maybe she's going to resent barry allen for creating that alternate timeline so she couldn't be normal and so that's her reasoning for wanting to like destroy the flash with her new powers or something i don't know that's going to be an interesting dynamic and um of course barry and iris kiss and they reconcile and they're like okay we can we can do this let's do this uh and then dr alchemy finds uh edward claris the rival inside of his holding cell and uh I, through the use of alchemy because he's not a metahuman through the use of alchemy enters that holding cell and kills edward claris and that's where we are going into next week's episode of the flash and I just cannot wait to see everything, you know, unfold from here. I, I loved that first episode of the season, but this second episode was just amazing. Just flawless from beginning to end. I, I would love to see how his actions now affected uh, Arrow. We've already seen that with John Diggle. Uh, I did make an assertion that the new Arrow, the new uh, Archer that's in Star City... Uh, at the end of last week's season premiere of the Arrow, of Arrow, um, I think that Barry Allen created him too uh, through the Flashpoint paradox, and we we don't know yet. I, I, that's a speculation that I have, but I think that's a uh, very good speculation, and we'll just see. Um, it's gonna also affect Legends of Tomorrow. Apparently, it's not gonna affect Supergirl, but Supergirl will be helping them in the crossover episodes. Um, I don't know exactly how all of this is going to transpire or, or play out. I'm actually kind of hoping that at some point that world will collide with the rest of the universe and become one, you know, DC cinematic CW universe, uh, CW universe. Um, we will see. We will tell. We'll Time will tell. Anyways, guys, this has been Geektoid. Uh, if you like this video, or if you like any of the other videos on my channel, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. And until next time, live long and geek on.